From the Global Washington Conference in Seattle, Washington, it's the 10th anniversary. I'm Stan Emmert. He founded and is the president of a university in his home country, Mr. Patrick Awa. Welcome to the show. It's a pleasure. Thank you very much. So this university that you've created, Ashesi? Ashesi University. And that means? The beginning. So the backstory is simply that, uh, you know, I was working at Microsoft as a program manager. I became a parent when my first child was born and suddenly I was paying a lot more attention to Africa and development in Africa because I feel that it is important for people of African descent regardless of where they live and it'd be important for my children and their children. And so that got me to think about what role I could play back home in Ghana to help with development. I considered starting a software company. Um, I settled on higher education because I determined that to really solve big problems you need strong leadership. And at the time, I was thinking about this, only 5% of college-aged individuals went to college in Ghana. So 5%? 5%. Oh my gosh. So almost by definition, the people who go to college will be running the country 20, 30 years forward. And I thought, what I could do, a contribution I could do that would be meaningful, would be to help change the way those future lead leaders are educated. And so doing, change the trajectory of the country. So how is it working? What are the it's, good parts and what are the challenging parts? It's working really well. You know, the, the good parts are that, you know, we made this bet that if we came in with a new kind of education that taught critical thinking and problem solving and ethics to um, young people who are just coming out of high school, um, transitioning into adulthood, that we would be successful in not only um, sort of creating a mindset, but a skill set as well. And that those two in combination would be a very powerful way to educate leaders. And we see that that's in fact bearing fruit. We see that our graduates are very sought after. Um, we have close to 100% placement um, within six months of graduation. Oh my gosh. We've quickly established a reputation in Ghana as being the, a, a top university, if not the top university in the country. You're a private university. We're a private nonprofit, and so and and we 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 had our students enact the first honor system, student-run honor system on the continent, where they're not only pledging to be individually um, people who are sort of acting with integrity, but also corporately holding each other accountable for ethical behavior. And so that's been, it's been really good to see that all play out. Uh, the difficult parts, you know, it was hard to uh, pick up the courage to leave Microsoft. It was um, not easy to raise the funds needed. Um, but we decided to start with a little bit of funding and prove ourselves and that as we proved ourselves that we'll be able to raise more money and keep going. Is there a focus of the university, meaning do you focus more on science than you do on business or English composition? Or Well, I, you know, if you look at the majors, there's a very heavy tilt towards engineering and technology. So it's engineering, computer science, and business management. But the curriculum has this liberal arts core. And, you know, that basically compels students to take a broad uh, spectrum of courses. So they're studying philosophy and history and African studies, leadership. Um, they all learn to program. So even our business students have to take a coding course. Um, Why is that? All, Why do you want to do that? Well, technology is going to be more and more important in the world, not less, and it's good for everyone to understand uh, technology and the capabilities of it. I um, asked that question for the American audience because right. they may not know. Right. And, and it is also the case that actually learning to program a machine is actually a good way to teach logic. Um, and so th there are different reasons why we've and plus, we see the we our definition of the liberal arts mm -hmm. is really about teaching people to ask the right questions, uh, teaching people to see problems from different perspectives, and giving people a variety of experiences. And so, we want everybody to to learn a little bit of you know a wide range of things mm -hmm. before they specialize. So one of the things that we've done differently from when I was in the United States um, studying at Swarthmore College 
um, you know, we had a distribution requirement and I had to study some economics and language and art history and so on, literature and so on. We've done that. But one of the things that we've done that is different is that we created a leadership seminar. And it's actually a series of four seminars that all students have to take. Mm -hmm. and, that, and that series is sort of focusing, you know, philosophy, um, the things that students are learning in philosophy and business and other things around the question of what constitutes a good leader, what constitutes the good society, the governance of the good society, mm -hmm. what constitutes the economic structure of a good society, and also compels them to really understand that leadership is service, that leadership is responsibility. And, um, and so that's, that's different because we didn't sort of just say, well, go study a little bit of philosophy and study anthropology and sociology and then put it all together yourself. We actually created this framework in addition where they're explicitly, very explicitly, really trying to explore and answer important questions about what kind of society do we want to see in Africa and what kind of leaders do we want to see and what kind of leaders do our students want to be. Mm -hmm. Both the students and eventually as uh, you know, citizens and leaders in our broader society. Africa is a continent with incredible potential. Yes. Yet, as someone who's done business in several countries in Africa, sometimes they, the leaders seem to get in their own way. Yes, they do. Um, how do you see things evolving over the next five to ten years? So I don't know about the next five to ten years. I do know that, I mean, if you look in Africa today, you look at the leadership core so at the political level, um, it's people mostly in my father's generation, maybe a little lower, right? And that generation were among the first to go to college. Um, they were educated um, in a very sort of didactic way and sort of hierarchy was very important. They played a role in um, sort of moving the continent away from colonial rule. Um, but now the need, there needs to be a shift to the next thing. And the next thing is how do we really drive economic growth and how, and how do we drive inclusive e economic growth on the continent, right? Um, and I think that's, that's something that falls on my generation, the generation behind mine. Uh, so this is something that, that needs to happen. Um, you know, when I look at the long-term future of Africa, you know, one thing that's very clear, no matter what happens, there needs to be a reservoir of people who've been educated to be good citizens and great leaders. And th that reservoir needs to be there in many countries. They need to know each other. They need to um, be interested in softening the borders between African countries, facilitating trade. They need to be interested in engaging the rest of the world as equal partners. And they need to be able to move with confidence. Um, and they need to be able to move with, with compassion and, and empathy for the people in their society. Mr. Ewa, thank you very much for being with us. Thank you very much.